Howdy folks and welcome back to Broken Ranks. Early on in this MMO, it might be very difficult to understand how certain mechanics work or how you should progress in the game. And so today I want to help a bit with that by giving you 13 of the most useful tips that I've learned for early game. I'm going to try to blow through these as quick as possible, so let's jump right into this. The first tip I can give you is that while you're traveling in the overworld, you'll notice that you'll sometimes come across mobs that have a chest icon above their heads. This will indicate that the mob is known as a champion and normally recommended to fight with the party. If you're able to defeat them, however, you have a chance of getting really high quality gear such as rares. You'll probably notice certain ones like the tax collector, but some of them might be tied to quest lines like the chieftain or the tangler. Broken Ranks is a very group-centric game, and not only can these champions benefit you, but instance bosses you come across through dungeons can too. The next tip has to do with attack type versus mobs. It's actually a thing where certain damage types are less effective or more effective based on what mob you're fighting. This is a mechanic I don't have a whole lot of information on yet, but the general gist seems to be, let's say you're fighting a ranger or a mage NPC and you attempt to execute some melee attacks. Those will more than likely be more effective, like having a higher chance to hit than another attack type. The third tip adds on to this because the AI is also capable of adapting to the attack style you're using. Let's say you're in round 5 and you've used nothing but ranged attacks so far. As time goes on, just like we can, the enemy will start to allocate more defenses in that category to try to further defend against your actions. So even if you're using 3-4 to four action points, it may not be the exact same chance to hit each time. The fourth one is that you always want to start this game out of the tutorial by setting up your combat strategies to best fit your playstyle and normal situations. Sometimes it can be more beneficial, in my experience, to set up a combat strategy with five different actions but less action points spread through it, as opposed to two or three with more allocated to each action. Keep in mind that allocating these points does not increase your damage but just the chance to hit. For example, I play a Sheed, so since a lot of my attribute distribution revolves around dexterity, I can set up strategies that have 4 or 5 attacks with only 1 AP in some of them, and still land those hits quite often to my surprise. But if you're playing someone like a Druid or a Knight, you might have to go for shorter actions but with more AP, because you'll probably have important buffs and debuffs that you'll need to land. Defense is also something to take into account, and normally for my first combat strategy, I would allocate at least 3 melee defense and 2 ranged, but if you're fighting a mob that normally does just range or just melee, I like to switch that up on the fly and allocate more points in that direction. The fifth one is that I would try my best to avoid falling into the trap of leveling up your normal skills. I wouldn't touch strike or war cry, unless maybe you're a druid, throw stones, and especially not flee. I would focus on leveling up your class skills because those are going to be the main offensive and defensive ability options we'll be using. And even if we're a Sheed or Barbarian, we still have ranged options in the class skills like Hadouken for Sheeds and Dirty Axing for Barbarians. The sixth tip is a quick one, but while you're in combat, if you hold down the shift button, you can actually see what everybody's status effect is in real time, and in a clearer way. Then we have the next one, and this one has to do with highlighting. I love to talk about this tip when it comes to CRPGs, and Broken Ranks does have a form of this mechanic as well. If you press the C key while you're in the overworld, it will highlight NPC names so that you'll be able to see and easily identify them, especially in crowded areas. For number 8, around level 7, you have the opportunity to buy your first combat pet. Now I'm pretty sure when I reached this level in Broken Ranks, as opposed to Pride of Tyrone, I was given a quest that allowed me to get this pet for free. So just to be safe, I would wait on getting your pet until you get this quest line. that way you could potentially avoid having to dish out 1.5k gold so early on in the game. But another thing to know is that you are capable of deactivating or reactivating your pet for combat situations. You can do this by clicking the pet icon in the bottom right corner, and I would recommend doing this in situations where you feel your pet may be in danger of dying. You'll pick up on these situations pretty quick, but I would normally do this when going into a party-based job like the one from Edward. Or if you're going to fight a boss like Chieftain or Cross Spider and don't want to risk it. And if you click on that sword icon above the pet's picture in the bottom right corner, this will access the pet equipment menu. From this menu, you want to set up what's known as the pet auto retreat health. Normally you'll want to keep this around 125 to 175 early on because your pet can easily die in 1 to 2 turns depending on what you're fighting. And also the fleeing mechanic takes place in the last part of the round, so your pet will have to survive that entire time until then. Utilizing this mechanic should save you a lot of money when it comes to having to rebuy your pet from the vendor. The ninth one is that there is in fact dynamic events that happen in Broken Ranks. Some of these can be hosted by Game Masters, but there are some that happen randomly just built into the game itself. Right now I don't know the exact times of each of them, and it seems like there's no website currently with this information, but you should see a big event notification in chat when they're happening. Alongside this, you'll come across various jobs that can be very beneficial for grinding experience and money. 
early on from levels 5 to 10 or around there, you'll find two different task missions that will come in handy. First coming from an NPC called Ritu in the city of Trentis near the center, this guy gives you the task of killing zombies east of the city. And then another one from the fisherman's village that requires you to kill bald bandits, which are a really good thing to farm on this early on, because they will have a chance of dropping gear you can use as well. For number 10, this is another quick but very useful one, and it's that in combat, if your character or one of your party members dies, you are normally able to run back to the fight location and join right back into the match. This is something that's very useful, especially if you're fighting an open world champion or in the middle of doing a party based job. In PvP this should also be a thing unless they change different Pride of Tyrn, so if your friends are still in trouble and you can make it back from the infirmary or you're in a dungeon fighting a boss, if you can make it back to the battle, I would strongly advise trying to do so. Number 11 ties into the PvP zone information. If you don't know about this, Broken Ranks actually does have PvP zones similar to Albion Online or EVE Online. The tip I want to give is how you know that you're in a green zone, yellow zone, or red zone. You can see this by looking at the text at the top of your screen showing you the location you're in. When you enter a new type of zone like a red zone, this text will turn red. So green zones are areas where no one can be attacked, yellow zones only certain people can be attacked like sadist or a few other types that will break down in the future, guild war enemies can be attacked in this zone, and there's a few other exceptions. Then we have red zones, purple zones, and black zones. One important thing you need to know about these types of zones is that if you're in a yellow zone, that doesn't mean that there won't be a red zoned area inside it, especially when it comes to being in an underground cave. Case in point, one of the very first caves you go into right next to where you fight the zombies, this cave has a bridge if you're going towards the western side that actually has a red zone right there inside it. I believe there's other red spots in this cave too, but this would be an area you could get attacked at if someone really wanted to. Luckily though, you don't have to worry about full loot on death, but there is a chance of losing common gray items, such as items bought from the blacksmith and also a lot of items found in chests or as questing rewards early on. Pretty small chance to lose just one item in your backpack on death, but still you should keep this in mind. But if you have any equipment that's like rares, psycho rares, sets, synergetics, all that stuff is safe. And if you upgrade your common gear to plus three or higher, it automatically becomes safe from dropping in that state as well. For number 12, I want to tell you that if you're in the overworld, you might notice sometimes after you just finished a battle, or maybe you finished a battle and took a bit of damage, but on top of that your pet died, all of a sudden you might see NPCs start to show as red on their indicators instead of yellow. This is because the AI party can decide by themselves if they want to change their stance towards you from neutral, like if you meet, or are above their minimum neutral character level, and aggressive. And one way they'll do this is if your character is pretty damaged and seems like an easy fight for them. Just make sure you rest up and drink some potions and they'll probably go back to neutral right after. And the last tip, when you're walking around in the world, you'll see various arrows above the heads of NPCs. These are actually indicators for quest lines and repeatable jobs that you can do for them. Gray means that you don't yet meet the required level to accept a quest line from them, but you can see what level you need by talking to the NPC. Blue means it's a repeatable quest line, and sometimes, or at least at the NPC known as Edward, you might be able to accept a solo repeatable job or a party based one that gives a lot more experience and gold. And then orange or yellow means that you do meet the requirements to do that quest line and that you can accept it. And that's all the tips I have for you so far regarding the early game for Broken Ranks. I really hope that at least a handful of these helped you, and if you have any others for the early game portion that you'd like to add, please leave them in the comments below. Have a wonderful night or day folks, and farewell.